Hello and welcome back to another vintage inspired video. I realize that these surroundings look quite different than previous videos I have done and that is because we're about to go do something extra special. I'm about to go inside of this prop auction house that has an auction taking place next month that will have all kinds of old Hollywood memorabilia. It'll also have other Hollywood items but you know we're here for the old Hollywood stuff and in this auction is one of the most special and iconic old Hollywood dresses of all time. I have always wanted to see it. It went up for auction in 2017 and I never thought I'd get the chance, but we're gonna go and see it right now. And here is the dress we came to see. This was worn by Audrey Hepburn in the 1954 film, Sabrina. I am very overwhelmed at first by this dress. I want so badly to take this home. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Look at that itty bitty waist. I mean, we all know that Audrey Hepburn had a very very tiny waist and it is well accentuated in this dress and here is a close-up I never thought I would be able to get this close to this magnificent dress just seeing all of this detail and the fabric this close-up is so special hello everyone so we're here with the Sabrina dress I'm still very overwhelmed about this and with me is Megan she is the costume expert at Prop Store. So she knows everything there is to know about this dress. So she is going to educate all of us. Hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully I learned some new things too because I've read up on this. But what I want to ask Megan is mm -hmm. how factually accurate those things that I read actually are. So take <laughs> it away, Megan. Well, I can describe to you a little bit about this dress. Of course, it's from the Debbie Reynolds collection. Um, and this is the Sabrina dress that she wears at the party. Um, so she comes out in it all her glamour. Mm -hmm. This is Audrey Hepburn, of course. From what I read, it was inspired by a Da Vinci drawing that he did for Audrey Hepburn. Mm -hmm. And she had gone over to Paris to meet with him to get some design ideas because she had all these ideas. And he said, I'd love to meet with you. I don't have time. I'm mm -hmm. running a runway show right now. Come to the runway show. So she went and then she got some sketches, some croquis. Um, then she came back and met with Edith Head, who of course is the designer for Sabrina. She's one of my favorites. Um, and she is magnificent. She is magnificent. And I did read in a recent article, he basically said, yes, he did inspire this, but the croquis that came back were very plain. I want to talk about the details of the dress, but before I wanted to go back to her meeting with Givenchy mm -hmm. and very famously, it is reported that he thought he was meeting with Catherine Hepburn oh, that day. Okay. And then was okay. told, no, this is Audrey Hepburn. Okay. And obviously she'd only done Roman holiday to uh -huh. date. And so he's like, I don't actually know who you are. However, you're here, go ahead and pick things off the rack. So what I had heard, I know I've heard the story where she came back with the, the croquis. I, thank you. I read that word and was like, I don't know how you say that. Sketches <laughs> is what I, I was like, they're sketches, Good croquis, sense. fancy, yeah. fancy way to say it. They're like, just go use your own money. Here's a list of things to buy. Then it was, I've heard, she ignored the list, bought what she wanted. She bought three dresses. There's another story where she bought the suit with the turban. She meets David back on the train platform oh, or the train yes. station with. Yeah. And um, this dress mm -hmm. and the black dress with like the beautiful straight across neckline with the bows. Okay. They said she had bought various forms of, of those things. Right, various, right. You know. For inspiration. Yeah. But then I also heard that she just brought sketches back and that's what Edith had took. I, and ran with. Right. And then I had heard, this is stamped on the inside with Paramount Studios Inc. Mm -hmm. Ladies Department. Mm -hmm. And people have said if this was actually a Givenchy dress that she took off the rack, as he said, go take something off the rack, would she it not correct. be completed inside? Because I heard it's also not completed inside in the way couture dress would be. Um, or it would have his well, labels. Well, that's debatable. Uh, mm. <laughs> the internal dresses uh, that are on couture are all over the place. They can be completely unfinished because they're so rushing to get out there, uh -huh. um, or they can be completely beautiful on the inside as they are on the outside. Um, that is what I've seen all 
throughout, um, you know, mid-century all the way up into, you know, to modern couture. She used all of those sketches as inspiration and this was her baby. Mm. I think they both had a, a train. They both had this kind of silhouette. Mm. There was no embroidery. Mm -hmm. um, so, I I mean, she could have brought back a dress that had been very similar based mm. off of his sketches. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if she presented those to Edith or not because yeah. there was no record. I know. It seems like there is no definitive this or that. Yeah. We know she won the Academy Award for sure this costume yeah, for sure black did. and white films mm -hmm. and I know Givenchy himself was not mentioned anywhere and that I wonder what he felt about that in that moment if he took any um there was issue. another article that I read that he did not take issue but he did mention that he felt like he was a collaborator and a big influencer on that movie he obviously went on to work with Audrey Hepburn on many films many post films. Sabrina yep. and she made sure that he always got credit after this film so maybe uh, maybe he had, the, yeah uh -uh. maybe it was like <laughs> use your sway and exactly. make sure that there's at least a little credit thrown to me because I wanted to hear about the details of what makes up this dress the fabrics I heard that there's boning in the bodice there is there is some structural boning you can actually feel it here if you have gloves on sorry um you can feel it here and here <laughs> and there's some padding you know because the structure is actually if you take this off it almost stands up on its own. <laughs> you would also feel it here. There's a lot of um, very heavyweight tool in mm -hmm. there that helps the um, help it kind of rise up to the occasion of a, mm -hmm. of a train, almost to a bustle, but not quite. Um, and it then, was very full in the back. I remember in the yeah, film, I feel like it like yes had a more of a 19th century sort of. And you can see that in our catalog, so you mm -hmm. can see a lot of that uh, that swoop there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just beautiful. All the structures in there, you can actually go up in there and feel it uh, because it is open. But if you expose this here, you can see that the embroidery goes all the way mm -hmm. back. I have a theory that it may have been meant to be a full skirt, and then they decided mm -hmm. not to. I can't prove any of that. Okay. But mm -hmm. <laughs> There's just signs that you see as a yeah. professional in costume as a design. Costumer, I that's that's I kind of look at that. And go, hmm. I wonder. I wonder if they tested it both ways. Yeah. Went, no. I think we're just gonna go ahead and squish this up. Oh yeah. No, this there. was the perfect. Yeah. I'm obsessed. And it's embroidered with Edith's design. Um, the full train is detachable, so you can see the little mm -hmm. um, the hook and eye back here. Um, she does have a zipper in the back. Um, I had to shave down this this dress form just to get this I'm dress on. Not surprised. It's super tiny, super tiny. Like famously and, very, very exactly. tiny. Exactly. But um, so this is silk organza. So this is silk organza with mm -hmm. embroidery on top. I think these were actually machine made um, sort of appliques here that are hand. Uh, sewn into these. So uh -huh. you've got some center flowers here, some of those flowers. It does have a dust ruffle. So uh -huh. that is extremely 19th century. <laughs> what color do you think it was originally? Oh no, you didn't ask me this question. This is, again, Not to put you on the spot. Theory. No, it's your expert opinion, expert but a theory opinion. based on your knowledge. Yeah, I've actually quite a bit of experience in antiques and vintage pieces, um, and they do yellow over time. So we do see some yellowing in here. Um, I think that because of the amount of yellowing that we see, that this didn't actually start out completely white. Mm -hmm. My theory is that it did actually start off as an off-white and black dress um, and has yellowed over time, of course, but it is still an exquisite condition. Oh, this yeah. It's just an amazing piece altogether. And this was part of Debbie Reynolds. Her, I mean, there's a whole story there, but she basically <laughs> rescued all of these from the trash heap of yeah. history and is credited yes. for the fact that we could stand here right now with this dress, but I had read that she kept it just in a trunk. I don't know for how many years, but. um, Well, and and oddly enough, it still managed to maintain its mm -hmm. uh, sustainability. I mean, yeah, it's even, structure. Yes, and you can, and that's, that's, that's the structure that's built in. Yeah, it, right? That's, that's that quality. Heavyweight tool, <laughs> yeah. And you can kind of poof that up uh -huh. and, and get it back to its splendors. In closing, who do we think designed? this dress well i think it's definitely a collaboration okay. i don't want to take uh, any credit away from anybody edith head i think That's was the final final call on it uh-huh final designer on it but you know with with the help of everyone else. yeah well there you have it there is the final answer from our expert i see a lot of the times this dress being solely attributed to Givenchy, and i do not think that that is accurate noticing that there's a lot more <laughs> 
to the story. I think it was the beginning of a beautiful relationship. Oh, yes, I definitely agree. We want to talk about these other dresses that are here. So this tell me about too. this one. Well, this is Sandy's dress from Greece, of course. Uh, it's that movie theater scene where mm -hmm. she you know, gets in a tussle with him and throws the ring mm -hmm. and then he goes off on his little ballad of Sandy. Um, and Branded at the crest. Exactly. <laughs> Go ahead and burn <laughs> it. Yeah. They think that the skirt has a little bit of discoloration over time oh, too. Really? Um, it is made of wool and then we have this nice little kind of cotton knit top and they think that the skirt was actually closer to this color. Oh. If you look on screen, but there's always a little bit of differentiation between uh, screen accuracy versus artifact accuracy on, on what they end up being, the colors end up being, just uh -huh. because of the lighting mm -hmm. and, and everything that they do in post. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they were kind of saying that this did have a little bit more of a green tint to match mm. the dress. So that's just a little bit of a history there. But it's a great contrast to the end of the film that's, when she comes out in that. Right. On banging purpose. yep on yep purpose. leather outfit yeah so <laughs> it's, this is going to be my second favorite dress in this collection this is lucy Ball's dress lucy ricardo's dress to be more accurate <laughs> there we go <laughs> and this one has a little bit of its own different history what i knew about it is that it was a master dress that then they used to make copies of so that they can have all kinds of different versions of this dress should they need to substitute in a different one have one get right. damaged i guess is what i would yes, think in that case and that's exactly what they they tend to do every production does mm -hmm. that so you mm -hmm. have a collection of them and this one happens to be the primary mm -hmm. just a little fun fact about the scoop line here so she was very, very conscious about her hair. Well, actually, the whole yeah. cast and the whole uh, crew helping her out was very conscious yeah. because she was just made perfect. It was very episode. every hair every in place. Thing, yes. And yeah. It, unless she was like trying to eat a bunch of chocolates and then yeah. her hair was all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> you know? To show that contrast, they needed that. It had to be really perfect. So when she got zany, yes, they exactly. easily but messed she, it up. And she got zany a lot. So yes. um, there was they, always a situation. They, yeah, exactly. So their designs um, for this one in particular, and you can see on on, on some of her other dresses throughout the episodes um, was a very scoop neck so that they could, and this is a de detached, what we call a dicky. This comes off right over her head and does not even touch very her smart. makeup, doesn't touch her hair. All right, last one in our collection that was up here. This is Charlie Chaplin's costume from The Great Dictator. Correct. And I, to be honest, my realm of knowledge lies mainly in the 40s, 50s, and 60s for old Hollywood. However, I do know that this was the first sound film that Charlie Chaplin did. Yep. He went dragging his heels he into really sounds. Did. He the really man did. held on as long as he could to silent <laughs> films because this was in 1940. Mm -hmm. And sound had come out in 1927. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the 20s, in the 20s. 20s. Let's yeah. say in the 20s, so yeah. you don't fact check me. Um, <laughs> so it is, I think, a very interesting piece for that historical fact alone. Yes. But the quality and condition of this actually looks really well, quite amazing. Any wool twill is going to last almost forever, unless, of course, little buds. Come yeah, I was going to say, what about yeah, moss? Exactly. But it's in just great condition. I'm super excited about it because it's one of our oldest pieces, I think, if not our oldest piece in the costuming yes. that we've sold. <laughs> what I love about just old Hollywood artifacts is, is just the history that they hold and for yeah. vintage clothing in general, yeah. but these especially because you can mark them to certain, obviously, movies and who wore them, yeah. but it's their story beyond that too. Like, where did this one end up? We know with Sabrina, it ended up at some point with Debbie Reynolds, but before sure. that, it was somewhere else. Right. And for who the knows years if, the, if a dress, you know, was walked off the set put in a garbage bag, worn for Halloween. Yeah. Who knows? Oh my gosh, and I'm sure. I feel like I've heard stories like that. Off the yeah. top of my head, I can't remember, but I know I've heard where it's like, oh yeah, my mom had that, and I just yes. would wear it yeah. for fun, but turns out it was some really important piece of cinema history. Yeah, and you, you'd you be amazed how many pieces come through like that where they say, hey, my dad has this. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it is? And we go, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. <laughs> touch that thing until yeah. we get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, we were pretty lucky to add this to our collection. It's a great piece. I hope it goes to a good home. As I hope all of these go to a good home because uh, you can't pass these. Yeah, up. I <laughs> want more than anything to buy the Sabrina dress I'm back here. Move out of the way so yeah. you can see that again. So you can fawn all over it again. <laughs> Um, I know that I will not be the one buying it, but I just hope whoever does buy it, I mean, I know you'll love and appreciate it because if you're spending that much money on it, you have to. You better or we're going to hunt you down. Yeah. And then can we be friends? I would love to. <laughs> I would love to hang out with you. Please do.
Yeah, <laughs> me, Megan, our new friends, and now we're going to be friends with Canada Exactly. Classes. All right, so I wanted to just thank you, Megan, so much yeah. for telling us all of that history. I've read so many different things about what made up this dress mm -hmm. online, so it is really nice to have someone who actually knows the answers to these things. And thank you for giving us all the info on all the other dresses, too. Oh, well, it's my pleasure, Been and honored. thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. All right, I wanted to give these other items their close-ups as well. For the Lucy dress, it's unclear if it was worn in an episode, but they know it was worn in a photograph where she was making that Lucy Ricardo face we talked about, and I'll put that photo up on the screen. I am still amazed at the condition of this Charlie Chaplin costume. One more look at the Sabrina dress because I have to. And then here is a close-up of Sandy's sweet drive-in dress. I wanted to show you just a few other really cool items they have in the upcoming auction. This is a flight helmet worn by Jimmy Stewart when he played Charles Lindbergh in the film The Spirit of St. Louis in 1957. Inside it has a Warner Brothers tag with his name and as a Jimmy Stewart fan, I just had to include this one. This is the number one old Hollywood dress for me, but this one by Edith Head from Rear Window, pictured here on Grace Kelly, may be my second favorite, and this is an item I am tempted to bid on myself. Right here we have some photos of Ingrid Bergman on the set of Spellbound. There is Alfred Hitchcock in the background there, he was the director, and here is Hitchcock again with a couple pups in the tree. There are some beautiful 8x10s and they're negative of Grace Kelly. These were taken during the start of her career when she was a contract player at MGM. This one I'm really excited about. This is my man Frank Sinatra's bow tie. <gasps> How cool is that? It was previously in his personal customers collection and I just love it. Just think of all the amazing songs he sang while wearing it. I wanted to show you just one more photograph because this photo is just pure joy. Pure joy. Look at the faces on Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire just having a ball. Since we were talking about Frank Sinatra, here is Dean Martin's suit from 1989. The auction has all these other amazing items as well. And I'm not going to be able to show you all of those, but it has a wide range of things. I am going to show you some items from Back to the Future. While they are not old Hollywood related, I love Back to the Future, and it has the 50s in there. This guitar is from the first one, but not from the 50s. This was from the 1980s scenes. All right, that does it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun here. I wanna thank Prop Store for allowing me to come and hang out with this dress in all of its glory. I hope it goes to a good home. And until that next video, I am wishing you a super swell day. Bye. If you enjoyed seeing this Audrey Hepburn dress, be sure to check out my other Audrey Hepburn dress video and I'll put a link up on the screen.